for this. I'll do this in the morning. And I don't have any inside information. The lady that did it, she got in there. Don't I know. mean, she made it happen. And he doesn't shy away from opinion. And I do enjoy drinking cold beer at ballparks. So if that makes me a baseball fan, then I'm a diehard baseball fan. It's Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. And a very good Monday evening to you, Jacksonville. It is Hacker After Dark, 1010XL, 92.5 FM with Dylan Denmark. The Hacker Ryan Green with you. Glad you are with us as we embark on another week. We are now 17 days, two weeks from Thursday night until the National Football League draft. Of course, the Jaguars do hold the 17th pick in round number one. Five picks total in the top 116. And then, of course, they will have three additional picks after that. So we will certainly spend some time on the draft this week. We will certainly spend some time on the Jaguars this week, and that will begin in a matter of moments as we kick it off here on Hacker After Dark. It was an interesting day. Uh, The Eclipse, uh, congratulations to all those who celebrate. I did not envision uh, taking a look at it. I'm not really, um, normally stuff like that doesn't interest me, or at least it didn't in my younger life. But Denmark, I've found as I've gotten older, I'm broadening my horizons a little bit. And when my wife hands me a pair of glasses, you got to do it and says, Hey, I ordered these on Amazon. We're going to go out and watch the eclipse at three o'clock. What did I say? Absolutely, honey. That sounds wonderful. So me and, uh, Heidi and little hack went out and, uh, sat in my mother's driveway who lives a hundred feet from our house. With our glasses, obviously, we had to have the glasses, and we stared up. And I will tell you this, it was a lot more interesting than I would have thought. I'm happy I did it. Uh, Again, I'm not, or normally stuff like that doesn't interest me. Maybe that'll change as I'm getting older in life. That was cool today. We only saw 64% of it. I think is what they said on the news. We had 64% of the sun covered. Imagine being in Texas and Arkansas. And I think Indianapolis is one of the major cities where for like four minutes, the entire sun was covered by the moon. That had to be pretty spectacular. But nevertheless, if you uh, watched it like I did, I hope you enjoyed it. I got something out of it. I hope you did as well. So that was the story this afternoon. The story this evening is the national championship game in college basketball. Obviously, Purdue and UConn, probably the two best teams all year long. Purdue and UConn, the two teams left standing, and they will tip it off, but not for a while. 9-20. A lot Ridiculous. of conversation about that. Yeah, 9-20 Eastern tonight is when that game will tip off. So we're looking at one shining moment tonight, probably, what, close to midnight. It'll be a late night if you want to stay up for one shining moment. But Mark Wise of ESPN, who's been with us the entire month of March Madness, He will join us right around 9 o'clock, about 20 minutes prior to tip, to get his thoughts not only on UConn and Purdue, but John Calipari leaving Kentucky and going to Fayetteville to coach the Arkansas Razorbacks. What? What is that about? Interesting move. Arkansas making a huge splash. What does that mean for Kentucky? A lot of names out there. I think the most interesting names. Obviously, you heard Billy Donovan. I don't believe that'll happen. You hear Nate Oates at Alabama. I've heard Dan Hurley of UConn. A little distraction for him coming into tonight. I'll tell you one that piqued my interest was Brad Stevens, the former Butler coach. He's now in the front office of the Boston Celtics. But a job like Kentucky doesn't come open very often. They're not going to have any uh, shortage of candidates But yeah, Calipari leaving Big Blue and heading to Fayetteville. We'll talk with Mark Wise about all that coming up before tip tonight, right about 9 o'clock. Also, Monday night coaching with Campo. My buddy Dave Campo, he's our head coach here on Hacker After Dark, as we will talk a little NFL draft with the head coach coming up in less than 20 minutes. But as we do every night to kick it off right here on Hacker After Dark, we give you... A big deal of the night. And Dylan Denmark. Let's do that right now. 
Time now for the big deal of the night. What's the big deal? What is the big deal? No big deal. It is a big deal. On Hacker After Dark. Wide receiver or corner, right? Corner or wide receiver. That's all the talk among Jaguar fans. Those seem to be the two biggest positions of need. Um, I did my very unscientific Monday mock earlier today. And I did take a wide receiver in the second round. I took Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. Call me a homer if you want. I thought that was the best value for the way my mock draft fell. But I did not go corner, nor did I go wide receiver in round one. I went with the guy that I've told you. If he's there, that's 100% who I'm taking. Not a corner, not a wide out, but no. A guy that's going to affect the opposing quarterback. That's Jared Verse from Florida State. He was there at 17, so I nabbed him very, very quick. And I would encourage the Jaguars, if Jared Verse is there at number 17, 17 nights from tonight, that is exactly who I think they should take. If Verse is gone, then you start looking at corner or wide receiver. I've had a lot of draft guys on. And I will continue to have a lot of draft guys on. In fact, we got one coming up at the bottom of the 9 o'clock hour tonight. My buddy Emery Hunt, he is the owner of Football Game Plan. Probably, how should I phrase this? The most extensive draft guide you can get. I mean hundreds and hundreds of pages of information that Emery puts out there every single year on Football Game Plan. You also see him on CBS Sports HQ. And Emery's just one of several draft guys we have had on or will have in the next couple of weeks leading up to the draft. And most of the draft guys that you talk to say basically the same thing. If you're looking at corner and at wide receiver, wide receiver is deeper. You could potentially get a good wide receiver at 48 in round two not necessarily a good corner at 48. You might want to go corner in round one, wide receiver in round two. I disagree with that. I would flip them, and I'll tell you why. If those are your two biggest positions of need, if corner and wide receiver are your two biggest positions of need, I trust young wide receivers in this league far more than I trust young corners. Young wide receivers seem to make a much bigger impact earlier than young corners. Granted, there are exceptions to that. Sauce Gardner, obviously, in New York is an exception. But by and large, you give me the option of an impact young wide receiver or an impact young corner, I'm going to take my chances that the wide receiver is going to have a bigger impact earlier. And why do we want it earlier? Because this team needs to win This team needs to win in 2024. Trevor Lawrence, this team is running out of his rookie deal. In fact, that time may have expired. But you need to win now. You don't want to wait two or three years for a young corner to develop if you can get help for Trevor in that offense. And that leads me to this question. Everybody's asking corner or wide receiver. Well, let's think logically about this for a second. Your top three corners on the roster right now are Tyson Campbell, Ronald Darby, and Darnell Savage. Your top three wide receivers on the roster right now are Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, and Zay Jones. What is a bigger need? Do you need to add to Tyson Campbell, Ronald Darby, and Darnell Savage in round one? Or do you need to add to Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, and Zay Jones in round one? Again, this goes back to how I feel you win games in today's NFL. I'm all for having a good defense. You got to have defense. Defense wins championships, right? Well, that was the moniker when my dad watched the NFL. That was the moniker when my older brother watched the NFL. And truthfully, that might have been the case 10 or 15 years ago. 
Denmark and the generation you're in, if you're in your mid to early to late 20s and younger, that no longer to me is real. What's real is Patrick Mahomes. What's real is Matt Stafford. What's real is Joe Burrow and Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts and all of these big-time quarterbacks. You know why they're the quarterbacks of the best teams in football? Because they score the most points. Points win championships in today's NFL. Offense wins championships in today's NFL. This is no longer the 85 Bears. This is no longer the Steel Curtain. This is no longer even the 2001 Ravens. This is about putting points on the scoreboard. And to me, if I'm deciding, all right, and I'm the Jaguars, wide receiver, defensive back, and I have the same grade on, say, Brian Thomas of LSU and, say, Kool-Aid McKinstry of Alabama, and they're both there at 17, I'm taking the offensive guy. That is where I'm at. Now, Denmark, I'm curious your thoughts. Kirk Davis Jones at wideout, Savage Darby Campbell at corner. Where is the bigger need, and do you agree with me that wideout would be the way to go regardless? Uh, no, I still go corner. I still think corner's a bigger need. You can, like, first round, you go 17, you got to get a corner, I think, still. Um, even with everything that's happened, you still go corner. You can still get a receiver late. Now, let uh, me ask you this. If Arnold from Alabama and Quinion Mitchell of Toledo are gone, arguably the two best corners, Okay. and your next best corner on the board is DeGene from Iowa, Kool-Aid. Wiggins from Clemson, or Kool-Aid McKinstry of Alabama, you would take Kool-Aid McKinstry over Brian Thomas or A.D. Mitchell? Yeah. I'd wow. still be fine with it. I still, you can still get a decent receiver in the second or third round. You can't get a – you cannot get that number one starting day one corner in the second or third round. I, I wouldn't be as confident. I don't think I, – I think if you draft one at 17, now Mitchell maybe, Arnold maybe, anybody other than that, I don't think starting day one. I mean, you're paying Darby $5 million a year. You're paying Savage decent money too, and Campbell's obviously your corner number one. So, if to me you're drafting a corner at 17 – are you going to start him over Ronald Darby? Are you going to start him over Darnell Savage? I don't know. I think if you draft a wide receiver, you could legit argue that Christian Kirk would be your wide receiver one, potentially Brian Thomas, A.D. Mitchell, your wide receiver two, with then Gabe Davis and Zay Jones. It's going to be a question we ask ourselves for the next 17 days. Wide receiver or defensive back? Denmark and I can't even agree on it. I would go wide out. He would go DB. I don't think either one of us are necessarily wrong. I think the Jaguars have needs at both. But again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Even though I agree that those are probably the two biggest positions of need, if Jared Verse is there, I do not hesitate in doing that. And to be honest with you, and we're going to talk with Dave Campo about this in just a moment, keep in mind, the NFL draft is not a one-year thing. The NFL draft is hopefully for five to ten years with that given player. Obviously, the track record is not great here in Jacksonville. Maybe that's going to change with guys like Walker and ETN and Lawrence and Harrison from last year. But you look at offensive tackle on this Jaguar roster. Cam Robinson's a free agent after 2024. Walker Little is a free agent after 2024. You do not have any tackles under contract, save Anton Harrison, after this upcoming season. Could that potentially be an issue at 17 if one of those coveted offensive tackles fall into your lap? So that's, to me, the four positions. D-end, tackle, corner, wide receiver. I would lend my thoughts to wide out or DB with the caveat being a versus there and just keep in the back of your mind that offensive tackle potentially becomes an issue after the 24 season. But we're going to talk about it a lot. That's the beauty of what we do. We can spend time on it every night. We will tonight in the 9 o'clock hour with Emory Hunt, the owner and founder of Football Game Plan, one of the best draft guides you can possibly get. But first, we're going to talk to a former head coach in the National Football League, my buddy Dave Campo. He's been in war rooms. 
He's gotten ready for drafts year after year after year. What is going on now two and a half weeks away? If the draft were held tonight, would the Jaguars be ready? Or are they still crossing the T's, dotting the I's, and getting things prepared for April the 25th? Let's talk draft. Let's talk wide receivers. Let's talk corners. And let's talk about the improvements in the AFC South. Well, Jarius Sneed to Tennessee, Stephon Diggs to Houston, and that was just last week. We'll talk about all of it with my buddy Dave Campo. He's next on a Monday night edition of Hacker After Dark with Dylan Denmark, the hacker Ryan Green with you. Jacksonville, we're glad you're with us right here on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. 1010XL takes you behind the microphone. You run your mouth nonstop since the minute we met. I don't know what's no, going no, on. No, 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 shut up. Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser. Was that a fart? The drill. It stinks. Mornings on 1010XL. Shut up. Hacker here for my friends at Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Let me tell you that company name again. Awaken 180 Weight Loss. They are changing lives. You know how I know that? Because they've changed mine. I've been on the program since February 20th, so about six weeks or so. In that time, I'm down 45 pounds. 45 pounds since February 20th, all thanks to the great folks at Awaken 180 Weight Loss. I heard Matt and Mike talking about this system. I had to get involved, and I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, it is the best weight loss program I have ever been on. If you need to lose weight like I did and still do, quite frankly, do yourself a favor. Call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800. Or go online, awaken180weightloss.com. 45 pounds in six weeks. Six weeks from now, that could be you. Call Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Spring's here and your home to-do list is getting longer. Don't stress, Fenwick Home Services has you covered 24-7 with cooling and plumbing solutions to fit any budget. From minor upgrades to major repairs, no matter your home's needs, we get it done and get it done right the first time. Schedule your seasonal AC tune-up today. Avoid costly breakdowns when our certified technicians inspect your system, ensuring it runs efficiently and remove buildup dust, pollen, and dander so you can breathe easier. Book now at FenwickHomeServices.com forward slash radio. Visionaries, builders, and doers, are you ready to change the world? Miller Electric is your opportunity to shape the future. Miller Electric is leading the charge in electric vehicle technology with our state-of-the-art EV Innovation Design Center. We're working to create a sustainable future. We're also the proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, powering their performance at the brand-new Miller Electric Center. Miller Electric, we provide competitive pay, unbeatable benefits. Apply today. MillerCareers.com, Miller Electric, an equal opportunity employer. Progressive asks, what do a slow Friday night, bored teenage boys, I'm bored, a pack of fireworks, (laughs) this is going to be awesome, (laughs) and a teetering branch suspended over your car have in common? Look out! (laughs) They can quickly wreak havoc on your slow Friday night. Uh-oh. Bundle your home and auto with Progressive for great savings and round-the-clock protection. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Not available in all states or situations. Your sports superstore. 1010XL. 92.5 FM. Hey, folks. Rick Ballou here for John's Auto. They've been a staple in Jacksonville going all the way back to 1985. At John's Auto, they service all makes, all models, cars, trucks, diesel, you name it. They do it. Whether it's routine maintenance or a complete engine overhaul, call John's Auto on Arlington Road. That's 904-743-3857 or go to johnsautomotivejacks.com. Here's your 1010XL community calendar of local events and nonprofit groups helping people here at home. If you'd like to learn more about the Police Athletic League's Julian Jackson Amateur Boxing Tournament Saturday, April 13th, Go to jackspalsports.org. If you'd like to play in the Northeast Florida Cornhole Tournament at Wingate Park, May 18th, register at tsunami10u at mail.com. It benefits Tsunami Fast Pitch Softball. The Tom Coughlin J Fund helps families battling childhood cancer, and there are ways you can help. Go to tcjfund.org. City Rescue Mission provides life-changing support for the homeless. Find ways to get involved. 
at crmjacks.org. If your home is missing a little love, the Jacksonville Humane Society has over 100 pets of all ages and breeds looking for a loving home. Find yours at jackshumane.org. You can find out how to share your community event at 1010XL.com. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion from MyBookie. If you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, bet the nonstop action of the madness with MyBookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. The best part about my bookie, you can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today only with my book. Easy Cater, 100,000 restaurants, one platform. Need food for a meeting or a company event? Easy Cater has everything you need to make food for work, work. With easy online ordering and reordering. Save your favorite orders, make edits as needed, and click. We even help you with expenses by keeping your receipts all in one place, which means all you need to do is sit back and enjoy the food. From ordering to reporting, Easy Cater has everything to make food for work, work. Order 24-7 at easycater.com. After a storm passes, the assessment of the aftermath begins. Sometimes damage to the roof is obvious, like leaks or missing shingles, broken or damaged gutters, or tree debris. But storm damage is not always as clearly present. Universal Roofing Contracting is here to help and will come assess your roof for any hidden damage. Call Universal Roof to schedule your free roof inspection at 855-ROOF-HELP or visit universalroof.com. License number CCC057165, CBC1258484. Are your kids ready to play this summer? Come check out the Y. Summer is a time for kids to explore new things and expand the limits of their imagination. At the Y Summer Camp, every day is a new adventure. Kids can learn about STEM, arts and humanities, athletic sports, outdoor games, and more. Registration is now open, but space is limited, and spots are filling up quickly. Learn more and find your adventure at fcymca.org. Search Summer Day Camp. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. And just like that, we are two and a half weeks away from the NFL draft. It is Thursday night, April the 25th. Of course, the Jaguars hold the 17th pick in round number one. They have a lot more picks, too. Remember, they have a pick in round two and a pick in round three and on Friday night, we'll be on for Hacker After Dark, and we'll have in studio with us my buddy Dave Campo. It's always Monday night coaching with Campo here on Hacker After Dark. Coach, how we doing? Doing great, Hack. Uh, getting close to the draft, so uh, getting a little bit more excited about you know where we are at with the Jags and, and what's going to happen here going forward. Yeah, there's no question about it. And I want to talk a lot of draft with you, Coach, but a couple of big things happened in the AFC South since the last time you and I spoke a couple of weeks ago. Number one, it's official, Legereus Sneed, one of the best corners in football, on his way to the Tennessee Titans. And, boy, what an off season the Titans had for themselves so far. Coach, what does Sneed to Tennessee do? Does that, you know, elevate the Titans, obviously, into one of the better secondaries in the league? Well, it certainly helps because their secondary wasn't very good. So, you know, you put a guy in there that has some, you know, all-star type uh, player, then you're definitely helping yourself. Uh, There's no question there. And I think, you know, the addition of Ridley, you know, they're doing what everybody else is doing in the South. Uh, You know, they're gearing up. Uh, They, I think that uh, every one of those teams – uh, have got something. They've got a quarterback now, and, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Snead is a very good player. It allows them to play more man-to-man. 
uh, which always helps, in my opinion, because you can put more pressure on the quarterback. So uh, I think that was a good signing for him, for sure. You know, obviously you're not in the room and in the inner workings of the Chiefs organization, but a player like Sneed, Coach, they gave him away for a ham sandwich, right? I mean, a second-round pick, sure, but in 2025, uh, it's like, what, what are you doing? I mean, maybe it was salary issues, finances, but that seems like a low price for the Titans to pay, and they don't even have to pay it this year to get a player of Sneed's caliber. Well, I think that in the league, you know, uh, when it's all said and done, Hack, you know it's all about money. You know, when guys make moves like that, they let guys go. They're, they've either lost a little bit in their mind or they're trying to get ahead of when, they, when they're when they going to, you know, be in a situation where they're paying them too much for what they do. Uh, so I think that's the big part of it. And listen, draft picks – are very very uh, hard to get from other people, you know. They're that's the lifeblood of a football team. Uh, you know, you can you can go out and get free agents this and that, but if you're going to be a a, a a franchise like Kansas City that's going to be good every year, you got to have draft picks and you got to hit on them. So, uh, you know, obviously, I think that's part of it. Uh, I think the Titans uh, did very well in getting them and. It's a good thing for them because they paid over what they should have paid probably for Ridley. Well, Jerry, a sneed to the Tennessee Titans was a one big move. Coach, the other big move in the division, Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans. That caught a lot of people off guard last week. You and I were texting back and forth the day it happened. Uh, you've had a few days now to think about it. Uh, what are your thoughts on Diggs now joining C.J. Stroud in Houston? Well, I think it's a similar situation uh, with Diggs, you know, as far as Buffalo is concerned. I, I don't think that he – he's he's still a really good player, but I think he's on the downside of that, and I think they got a hit of that. But I also think that there were some issues going on there, and, you know, I'm not going to say that that's going to happen. I think sometimes when you get a guy that's disgruntled and he has another opportunity to – to resurrect himself, he maybe plays better. But it also can be a little bit of a an issue when you bring a guy in that's kind of has a history of kind of being an eye guy. And I think that that's something that they have to deal with. The thing that con concerns me more than that is what Houston did w with getting the running back and the pass rusher and a guy like that. You know, they're really retooling some situations. They didn't stand, stand pat which I think we did, unfortunately, a year ago. The head coach, Dave Campo, here with us on Hacker After Dark. Coach, I want to focus on Houston in a second. Quickly to Buffalo, you were on the staff when Dallas had a star quarterback in Troy Aikman, and I'm just curious, when you have a star like Josh Allen in Buffalo, do the management team, the head coach, do they have to go to that quarterback and say, hey, I know we lost Gabe Davis, I know we're trading – Stephon Diggs. I mean, what's the protocol when you have a star quarterback when you're trading or losing his best weapons at wide receiver? Well, I think the quarterback is always in a discussion. And, you know, again, the general manager and the head coach and the scouts are going to do their due diligence and they're going to do what they think is best for the ball club. But if you've got a quarterback that is, is a guy that can – in your mind, can take you to uh, that final game and, and win it, uh, you certainly uh, are going to involve him in a discussion. So I'm sure that they've had, uh, you know, conversations with Allen. Uh, I think that uh, th there might have been a little bit of that with Diggs that maybe Allen wasn't as, you know, as disappointed as he could be. Uh, I don't know that. I don't know what, what transpired. I'm only going on what I hear on some things. But there's no question that, uh, you know, they're telling uh, Allen that we're going to get you the weapons you need. Uh, but you look at what they did with Rodgers in in, in uh, Green Bay, you know, they made the decision that, hey, uh, we're going to do what we have to do for the betterment of the team going forward. So you can have a great quarterback and all that, but he's not going to make the final decision. 
Now, Coach, from the Houston side of this, and you alluded to it earlier, not only do they bring in Stephon Diggs, you add him to the broad end, Joe Mixon, Daniil Hunter, uh, D'Amico Autry. I mean, they had a quite a haul in free agency. They get Tank Dell back from injury. Nico Collins, obviously, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson. I mean, good heavens, on paper, the Houston Texans look like they've won the offseason. Well, they won the offseason, but I'm not panicking. And I don't think anybody should panic because, number one, all those guys have to fit in. You know, sometimes, like I said, there might be some too many cooks in the kitchen when you bring in that many guys. But at the same, uh, you know, they improved their football team. They didn't stand pat. That's what concerns me. But at the same time, they were 9-8. and eight. We were 9-8. and eight. I think our football team, with what we added, is going to be a better football player than last or team than last year. And I'm actually kind of excited, uh, Hack, that, that the league is getting stronger because I firmly believe that the competition part of it is important. And if you, if you go into a, a situation where you're battle-tested every week, I think that makes you better. And our football team, I believe our guys feel like they screwed up last year and we brought in some character guys, and I think we're going to contend just like we did a year ago, and hopefully we can be the team that goes over the top. A couple of more for the head coach, Dave Campo. He's with us here on Hacker After Dark. All right, Coach, that brings me to the Jacksonville Jaguars. We are two and a half weeks away from the draft. You'll be in studio on our show on the Friday night, rounds two and three, and we're certainly looking forward to having you with us. Um, so let's focus right now, at least on round one. Everybody's talking about defensive back. Everybody's talking about wide receiver. Not so much, Coach, individual players, but your thoughts first at DB. Tyson Campbell, Ronald Darby, Darnell Savage appear to be your top three corners. Do you believe corner is still a pressing need and one the Jaguars might fill there in round number one? Yeah, I definitely think it's a it's a one that they might fill. Uh, I think it's a, a need. You know, I it kind of depends on how what they think about the backup guys like Gregory and uh, Greg Jr. and you know uh, Buster Brown. Whoever, yes, uh, you know Brown. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm still. <laughs> I may be in the minority, but I'm still more if there's a tackle sitting there offensively you know my feeling is this way okay let me put it this way i think corner is a need i think they could use a a wide receiver if there's one there for example thomas might be there maybe he's a guy that can be a true number one but i still believe that you win up front on both sides of the ball and for me those big athletic linemen they, they don't come every day. There's there's corners in the draft. There's receivers in the draft. You've got a better chance on hitting one of those guys in the later rounds. And when I say later, I'm talking about second, third, fourth, whatever, beyond the first round. I believe that you pick a guy that helps you score points first. And protecting our quarterback, to me, is one of the number one things going into this draft. That's interesting you bring that up because some people tend to forget, you know, right now it looks okay. Cam Robinson, Anton Harrison, Walker Little is that swing tackle, I guess. But Robinson and Little, this is their final years of their contract, right? There is a chance that 12 months from now, Robinson and Little are not here. So you don't just draft for one year. You obviously draft for the future and with knowing that the contracts are coming up for Walker Little and Cam Robinson coach, I think that idea of offensive tackle should not be lost there at number 17. I tend to agree with you there. Yeah, there's no question about that. And I think the thing you have to look at is, uh, you know, how many, how many draft picks over the last, I don't know how many years, let's just say since 2000, have they have made their second contract? That's not very good, their record. And so to me, uh, the more young players that you can get into your program going forward that have a chance, when you take a guy in the first round, you certainly hope that he's a guy that's going to get to the second contract. 
And and if they do the right pick, and I think that there's some tackles that, that are there, there might be one there that you can say that, hey, this guy's got a pretty good chance, and then you move on and go from there. Now, Coach, at the wide receiver position, the way it stands right now, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, Zay Jones, and whatever order you want to put them in, presumably Parker Washington is your four, and then I guess Devin Duvernay, the free agent from Baltimore, could be your five. If those are the five on the depth chart opening day, are you okay with that, or do they need to address wide receiver early in the draft, if not round one, certainly round two or three? I believe that we're going to be okay there because I look back to, uh, you know, two years ago when we spread the ball around and didn't worry about who the ball was going to. And to me, if we protect better, which I believe we helped ourselves a little bit in the offensive line, hopefully with continuity, it will help. Uh, If we protect the quarterback like we did two years ago, then those guys are definitely adequate. My feeling about the wide receiver position is if there's a corner and a wide receiver there and you have them graded the same, or if you have the receiver graded a little bit better than the corner, then you take the receiver. Because, again, I believe that you take the guys that help you score points. And if there's a guy there that they think can be a number one going forward and they don't have anybody graded higher than him, then I think you take them. Final moments with the head coach, Dave Campo. It's interesting hearing that coming from you because you're a defensive guy. I mean, that's that's your pedigree. You're a defensive side of the ball guy. And, and, and to me, the one guy that I am salivating over, the idea of him coming to Jacksonville, is Jared Verse, the defensive end, edge rusher out of Florida State. And maybe that's not the biggest position of need for the Jaguars coach. They got Eric Armstead and Walker and Josh Allen. I mean, they got some guys there. But my gracious, if you had a talent like Verse at 17, uh, th- that to me is what I would do. I mean, so that comes down to best available player or position of need. Where do you fall on best player or best position of need? Well, first of all, when you're talking about Verse now, to me, that's one that you would definitely consider because everybody's saying, and I've watched him enough to know Uh, the chances of him slipping to 17 are probably not very good. If he does, that's one of the guys that you have to consider as well because the big guys that can rush the passer are hard to find as well. So to me, that's one that they would consider. That's why at this point in the draft, it's kind of hard to say, hey, they're going to lean towards this guy or that guy. That's when you see the mock drafts out there where they're all over the, you know, it's Quinion, it's uh, Thomas, it's Verse, it's Byron, uh, the the defensive lineman from from yeah, Texas. Byron Murphy, uh, right? Yeah, Byron Murphy. That it's it's all over the lot, you know. Because there's look, it, their board goes one through three hundred, however many guys there are in the draft, and they're going to be looking to see if any of the guys that they have graded up in that top. 12 or 13 or 14, if any of those guys slip to that spot, they're going to be looking at him, I guarantee you, because the best player in the draft, uh, if he's a guy that they think is a is a difference maker going forward, they're going to take him. Coach, as we wrap up, we're two and a half weeks away. Are boards set? I mean, what's the conversation now? Scouts, coaches, GM, two and a half weeks out from the draft. Do they have a pretty good understanding of where that board is right now? Well, I think they have it up there, but this is the time right now, in my opinion, and I'm going by what we did back in the day. You know, uh, this is the time that the last two weeks prior to the last week is when they have everybody in the room and they go through that board from one to whatever. And, you know, all of the uh, scouts – Uh, everybody's got an opinion. They watch a little bit more tape on every guy in the room. They talk about every guy. And and then the final decisions are made during this two-week period, in my opinion. Now, obviously, they've gone through every guy. They're just getting one more time through to make sure that, that everybody's on the same page 
as to how they have them graded on the board. And then the decision makers will make the final decision. Obviously, Coach, as we say goodbye, you got to wait to see how the board falls draft night. Certainly, that goes without saying. But as we sit here 17 days out, um, look, I mean, they, they have to know, right? I mean, do they have, you know, four or five guys? I mean, obviously, they're still talking about everybody. But have they narrowed it down at this point to a handful of guys that, all right, if these are the guys that are there at 17, this is the direction we would go? Yeah, I think what they do, and and again, I'm going back to my days in the draft room, uh, you know, during my career, uh, that they have guys ranked in 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 groups. In other words, they've got four or five guys that they would take if they slipped. They've got four or five guys that they think are going to be there at 17, and if any one of them are there. Uh, they they wouldn't have a problem taking them. If there was one of those guys there, they wouldn't have any problem taking them. The the issue that you have is that on the on that board, there are very few teams that have more than maybe 15 or 16 guys with first round grades. So they're going to have a group of guys from 17 through whatever. That if any of those guys are there, they make a decision on whether or not they want to back up. If there's enough there where they feel like they can get pick up a draft pick or two to be able to move back and get the one of those five guys, so they definitely have them grouped. So what you're saying there is correct. It is fascinating. We are two and a half weeks away, and again, the Jaguars not only pick 17, they got a second rounder, a third rounder, and two fourth rounders. Coach, they got five picks in the top 116. And I've made this point all year long or all off season long and, and leave us with this. The AFC South has put the Jaguars on notice, right? Balky has not drafted well in the second, third, and fourth rounds as of late. That needs to stop now. I mean, not only pick seventeen, but your second, your third, and potentially both of your fourth rounders, you gotta hit on those guys this year, correct? Yeah, that, that, that's, you know, you obviously you hope that's going to happen. I was going to say, I hope they do better than they have. But uh, at the same time, you know, I'm not giving up on Strange. I'm not giving up on Bigsby. But I, I certainly think that in the second round, for sure, you ought to have a guy that's going to contribute. Uh, and, and, you know, then the third and the fourth, they're, they're guys that should be contributors uh, down the road. And so to me, uh, a lot of what they do in the second and third round, that's going to be the interesting ones for me, Hack, when we're on when we're on the air, because it really depends on what they did with number seventeen, or if they backed up or whatever on what they're going to be looking for in those rounds. He's our head coach here on Hacker After Dark, my buddy Dave Campo, and he will be in studio with us Friday night of the draft during rounds two and round three there in Detroit. Coach, always appreciate it. Thank you as always, and I will see you in about two and a half weeks, my friend. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, and uh, go Jags. When you want breaking sports news, tune in to 1010XL. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Or any of our social channels at 1010XL. Satisfied? <laughs> hey, Hicken here. I couldn't be any happier than to join the George Moore Chevrolet family. When I say family, I mean it. Visit their beautiful showroom today off Atlantic Boulevard. Find out exactly what I'm talking about. No pressure, just friendly help. And whether you want a car, a truck, SUV, electric, pre-owned, you name it, George Moore Chevrolet has it. If you can't make it over to Atlantic Boulevard, no problem. MooreChevy.com is easy to navigate as any site you will try. It's never been more easy to use. George Moore Chevrolet. Together, let's drive. Doc Doc Rooter is a full-service plumbing company that's locally owned and operated, fully licensed and insured. We'll be at your home in a timely manner, provide honest pricing, and ensure the job is completed correctly or we'll make it right. Doc Doc Rooter can handle all plumbing jobs, including repairing broken pipes, clearing clogged drains, to installing new fixtures, water heaters, garbage disposals, and full repipes for older homes. If you're stuck, call the Doc, 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. Dave Binion here with my son Ammon, who is the air duct cleaning manager at Zero Res. So Ammon, you may notice a little rattle in my voice and some puffiness in my eyes. That's because allergy season is coming on. Can Zero Res help? 
Yes, your health has a lot to do with the air you breathe. A clean and healthy home begins with clean air. At Zero Res, we can help clean the air in your home by cleaning your air ducts, cleaning the coils in your HVAC units, and fogging the system with a powerful antimicrobial that helps kill and control the growth of microorganisms in your air. We also have options for maintaining your clean air with our excellent inline air purifier and UV lights that will help keep your system clean and healthy. At Zero Res, we are more than just air duct cleaners. We're a clean air specialist. Have Zero Res air duct specialists out and right now we'll give you $50 off your air duct cleaning and while we're at it we'll give you $50 off your dryer vent cleaning. Zero Res. Spelled forward or backwards. It's, it's the, the right way, way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C Zero Res. Attention veterans if you have a VA loan you need to listen to this especially if your current rate is higher than 6.5%. Now is the time to take advantage of the federal government's VA Streamline Refinance Program. With my friends at Loan Pronto, you can. Go to LoanPronto.com. Prosser here, and Loan Pronto has fixed rate APRs in the five. You can drop your rate now. Lower your payment with no income documentation and no appraisal. Do it at LoanPronto.com. Their all-digital platform makes it easy. They can even cover your closing costs. If you need cash now, Loan Pronto can get you up to 100% of your home value. You can pay off all your credit cards or other debt and save as much as $1,000 a month. Call Loan Pronto now at 904-999-1508 or get a 30-second rate quote at LoanPronto.com. Ask about Streamline VA loans, no income doc, and no appraisal. Loan Pronto, 999-1508 or LoanPronto.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval. Fish are good at hiding. Captain Kevin can help you find them. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Find more fish on the Ring Power Fishing Forecast Show. Thursday nights at 6. Brought to you by Awaken 180 Weight Loss on 1010XL AM. This is Ace Carline for QC Kinetics. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. If you're tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. They've got two great locations. Call for a free consultation at 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. And go see them, Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. You can get in. They've got availability. You need to give them a call. Stop dealing with pain in your hips and your shoulders and your knees. Steroids, surgery, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. Give QC Kinetics a call today. Again, 904-274-5522. Go see them in Mandarin and Ponte Vedra. That's QC Kinetics. and parlays where cash and tickets all around it's baseball betting season and vison's mlb betting guide is a home run for betters download your free special edition of the guide featuring a betting preview of the atlanta braves and tampa bay rays at 1010xl.com that's 1010xl.com Prosser here. When it comes to the business of selling your home, there's one promise I can give you that will deliver, and that promise is chadandsandy.com. That's chad, A-N-D, sandy.com. How do I know this promise is guaranteed? Because they say so, and then they deliver. You see, Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed-upon price and deadline, or they will buy it. So whatever problems you think you're having selling your home, There is your simple solution. They're going to buy it if it's not sold for exactly what you want. Mortgage rates have lowered going into the spring selling season. Now is the time to maximize your equity, and you can do it with the real estate team of Chad and Sandy. They have a plan and the experience to sell your home fast for maximum cash this spring. John and Ursula in Green Meadows wrote in, we weren't in great health, decided to downsize to an easier place to manage. After 185 days, our home failed to sell. We went to Chad and Sandy, sold in 12 days. You can too at chadandsandy.com. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. Yes, it is. We'll take you up till 10 o'clock tonight right here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM. 
back into the world of the National Football League coming up at the bottom of the 9 o'clock hour. Emery Hunt, the owner and founder of Football Game Plan. You can also see him on CBS Sports HQ. We'll talk Jags. We'll talk AFC South. We'll talk draft and more. You might remember Emory last year was the guy we had on that picked Indianapolis to win the AFC South. And at the time, we thought, oh, that was ludicrous, right? He almost nailed that. Came within one week in week 18, one dropped pass. Remember how the Texans beat Indy to end the uh, Colts season there, the final week of the regular season. So Emory knows a thing or two about what he's talking about. He's got a comprehensive draft guide at football game plan, and we'll talk to him about the Jaguars and their draft outlook. That comes up in uh, at the top or the bottom rather of the nine o'clock hour coming up in less than 10 minutes. Mark Wise of ESPN to not only preview the national championship game, UConn and Purdue, which tips off in about a half an hour, but also the John Calipari news, man alive. John Calipari had everything rolling at Kentucky, right? All the one and dones and things were great and a national championship and recruiting the best of the best. And over the last, I don't know, a couple of years, really since COVID, uh, Kentucky had been teetering a little bit. Things just hadn't been going Cal's way. They lose a couple of weeks ago to Oakland, a 14 beating a three seed in round one of the NCAA tournament. Cal meets with the AD at Kentucky, and you think, all right, they're smoothing things over. Apparently not. Apparently he's on his way to Fayetteville, Arkansas, to be the head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. I mean, what a move in the same conference for John Calipari to leave Kentucky and go to Arkansas. That deal was all but finalized, according to reports coming in as recently as an hour ago. So now it begs the question, and we'll ask Mark Wise about this, who not only works for ESPN, but did a lot of work with the University of Florida back in the day. (coughs) Potentially, a name you're hearing is Billy Donovan. Now, I don't think Billy Donovan wants to come back to college basketball. Why would he? He makes a ton of money in the NBA, doesn't have to recruit, doesn't have to deal with boosters, doesn't have to deal with NIL and everything going on right now. He just coaches millionaires and their agents there in Chi-Town. So I don't think Billy Donovan's going to come back. Brad Stevens is another name that you potentially hear linked to Kentucky, the former Butler and Boston Celtic coach, but the same thing. He's now in the front office of the Boston Celtics. Cushy job, office job, making a ton of money. Why would he want to come back and deal with the grind of today's college basketball? But the names that you will also hear are Nate Oates from Alabama, you know, potentially um, Coach Drew there at Baylor. Obviously, the man you're going to see tonight, Dan Hurley at UConn. We'll see. A job like Kentucky doesn't come open very often. But uh, shocking, really, that John Calipari is about to become the new head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Other news in the world of college basketball, Walter Clayton of the University of Florida announced earlier today that he is going to test the NBA waters, but, and this is important, but keep his college basketball eligibility. He's not going to sign with an agent or, I guess, or whatever the verbiage is now. I'm not really sure how that works with NIL. But he's going to keep his name in the waters of college basketball, too, So if the NBA report comes back and he doesn't like it, he can come back. And he said the only school he would come back to is Florida. That would be absolutely enormous if Todd Golden and the Gators got Walter Clayton back. They're losing Tyrese Samuel and Zion Pullen to graduation. Riley Kugel's already entered the transfer portal. We don't know yet about Will Richard. Obviously, the three guys they're going to build around, you would think, are Thomas Howe, Alex Condon and Micah Hanlocked in, but man, if they get Walter Clayton back, that would be enormous. We'll have to wait a few weeks to see what the NBA says about Walter Clayton and his prospects heading into the draft in late June. As far as the game tonight, and I'll use this analogy with Mark Wise in a moment. This to me, UConn and Purdue, not to give an X's and O's breakdown because I probably could and I haven't watched enough of both, 
I've watched enough of them this tournament to realize these are probably the two best teams. It's like a movie where you got one guy on one side, another guy on the other side. There's a big battle going on. And the one guy is getting rid of the rift raft on one side. The other one's getting rid of the rift raft on the other. And they finally meet in the middle for the climax, right? The culmination. That feels like tonight. UConn and Purdue have basically been the two best teams all year. They looked like the two best teams in the tournament. And they play tonight in what should be hopefully a very good national championship game that starts here in less than 30 minutes. With all that being said, let's talk about Calipari leaving Kentucky. And let's talk about this game coming up for the national title between UConn and Purdue. My buddy Mark Wise of ESPN has joined us all month long, and that continues tonight. We'll talk national championship. We'll talk John Calipari and more. Mark Wise with you next on a Monday night edition of Hacker After Dark. Jaguars beat reporter Hayes Carline. Oh, well, he's very popular. Weekday afternoons on the Frangie Show. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. On 1010XL. You sounded like Dirty Harry just then. 92.5 FM. Here's Linda Beaver. Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet have just received a special allocation of new vehicles directly from the factory. Not 10, not 20, but hundreds of new vehicles with special savings that haven't been seen in years. Every new vehicle available in your favorite color and option as far as the eye can see. Plus, get our exclusive 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty with every new car purchase. Hurry to Beaver Toyota in St. Augustine or Beaver Chevrolet in Jacksonville before the best deals are gone. Bueller Air Conditioning presents Are You Cool? Today's challenger, a corporate management manager from Jacksonville, Florida. Meet Les Blankston. Yeah, hi, Bob. That is a remarkably beige suit there, Les. Tell us, why are you on the show? <laughs> well, I just replaced my old air conditioner with a new one from Bueller, and I'm just so comfortable these days. I wondered, am I cool now? Let's find out, Les. Go ahead and spin the wheel. <laughs> That's right, Les. By upgrading your old AC to a more energy-efficient model from Bueller Air Conditioning, you'll save money, save energy, and proudly show your family that you are cool. <laughs> Do you think I should get a mohawk? Uh, pace yourself, Les. Stay cooler with Bueller. Visit BuellerAir.com. Hacker here with another unbelievable stat. I'm now down 45 pounds in just six weeks with Awaken 180 weight loss. 45 pounds, and I basically just started the program. I wasn't always this walking advertisement for feeling good. Let's just say the struggle was real. Tried everything, programs, diets, and yes, even those injections. Sure, I lost a few pounds, but the results were so slow. Top that with not feeling myself, coupled with needing shots for the rest of my life? No thanks. Thank you. It's not just the 45 pound number. Even though, yeah, that's unbelievable. It's about life, man. I took a little hack to SeaWorld last week. Walked around all day, no sweat, no being tired. Two months ago, I would have skipped out on that whole experience. If it's time for you to drop some weight like it was for me, do what I did. Go to awaken180weightloss.com or call 844-346-1800. That's 844-346-1800. It's Awaken 180 Weight Loss. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. With Spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot, you can get up to $2,300 off select kitchen packages from top brands like GE Profile. That means you can save on a new GE Profile smart quad door refrigerator that's full of convenient features like a dual dispense auto fill pitcher and an ice dispenser with up to 12 and a half pounds capacity. Bring convenience to your kitchen with smart, innovative appliances from GE Profile. Right now, save up to $2,300 on select kitchen packages with Spring Black Friday savings at The Home Depot. How doers get more done. The Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute is now offering online scheduling for new patient appointments for all of their positions. Simply schedule your appointment on your cell phone, tablet, or desktop. JOI is the first orthopedic practice in North Florida to offer this feature to patients. To schedule your appointment online, visit JOI.net and click on the button at the top of the page. If you'll be using insurance, be sure and have your information handy. JOI, where the pros go. 
1010 XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010 XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. Well, there's going to be one shining moment tonight. Who will that moment be for Purdue or UConn? Probably the two best teams in college basketball a majority of the year. They're set to tip things off in a little less than a half an hour to decide the national champion. And in UConn's case, trying to become the first team since Florida to repeat as NCAA tourney champions. With that, Mark Wise of ESPN has been with us all month long talking about the NCAA tournament that culminates tonight. And Mark is kind enough to join us again here on 1010XL. Mark, how we doing? Hacker, I'm doing great, man. You know, t- tomorrow, Tuesday, is one of the saddest days of the year for me because the, for the first time uh, since early November, there are no college hoops. But I got to tell you, I am so excited for this game tonight, this particular matchup, uh, the two best teams in the country. And you might argue – um, without the Purdue loss in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year, the two best teams in the country in the past two years. There's no doubt. And look, a guy like you that eats and sleeps and breathes college basketball, isn't this kind of what most expected, Mark? I mean, the tournament was fun and 68 teams and there were upsets yeah. and great moments. But at the end of the day, I think most people probably thought, barring something weird, it was going to be UConn and Purdue to decide the national champion. But I got to tell you, very rarely does what we think the two best teams survive this three-week gauntlet, if you will. You know, Krzyzewski used to talk about getting his team to try and buy into three two-game weekends and, and advancing that way. You know, nobody has the perfect formula. Otherwise, we would have seen it done a long time ago. Um, UConn trying to make history, Matt Painter trying to shake off the, the last three or four years of disappointment and early exits in the NCAA tournament. There are so many storylines in this championship game, but let's not lose sight of one of the real bonuses we're getting tonight is that we think these are the two best teams. There's no doubt from the eye test for me, they appear to be the two best teams. And in UConn's case, and really, I guess you could say the same thing for Purdue. We'll get to them in a moment. Let's focus on UConn. It's almost looked easy, Mark. I mean, five wins, I believe, all by double digits. Alabama gave them a good game for a little while on uh, Saturday night, but ultimately UConn pulls away, wins again by double digits. And, And here we go, trying to become the first team since Florida to repeat, how have they made it look so easy during this tournament? I think they, when you have as many different ways as they can win a game, they can win the game in the 60s, they can win a game in the 90s, they can win a game with their offense, their defense, their three-point shooting, their ability to get to the line, their ability to get to the rim. They are, without question, I think, the, the most balanced team in the country. Now, I will tell you this. I think I was on last Monday when I said Alabama had to make 12 threes. And the reason that game was close is because they made 11 threes. So um, I, I, I did not think, moving over to Purdue, I did not think Purdue played particularly well on Saturday at all. I, I thought Smith was maybe – his worst game of, of the season. Remember when they played poorly uh, against Fairleigh Dickinson last year, Smith was just a freshman at the point and really struggled. That cannot happen tonight. Uh, I think there are more ways for UConn to win this game. Is there a formula for Purdue? Absolutely. But it all starts with the big fella, Zach Eady. Mark Wise of ESPN here with us on 1010XL in Jacksonville. Zach Eady's been dominant. And, and, you know, this is more of a conversation for when we talk before the NBA draft, which we do every year, and we will again, yep. you know, in June. But, Mark, it goes to show you the difference between the NBA, man, and where we are in college hoops right now. Right. To me, right. Zach Eady is the most dominant player in the tournament right now, and I don't know if he's going to be a first-round pick in the right. NBA and, draft. And- the games are completely different. 
Yeah, it's kind of a throwback year when you throw in uh, Klingon at UConn, DJ Burns at NC State, the teams that have um, had a lot of success in, in the postseason. Um, you know, they, they've all had legit big guys, and that we've kind of gotten away from that in the college game. I don't know that we'll have that again. I just think it's kind of a timing issue. Um, I think it, it, uh, I said this earlier. If Purdue's formula to success is a little bit narrower than UConn's, and I believe that, and I said it started with Zach Eady, he must win that battle. Zach Eady has gone to the free throw line, and this will be a challenge for UConn because I, I think everybody fouls Zach Eady. I, I, I don't, he's so big, so physical, so strong. He's gone to the free throw line, Packers, 426 times this year. Wow. That's more than 10 a game. That's 46% of all Purdue free throws. So he's going to get to line. He, that's where the first point of emphasis I want to make, he must win his battle with Klingon or whoever else they're going to throw at him in the middle. It'll be interesting to see how UConn handles him when they throw it into the low block because NC State had some success waiting for him to put it on the deck and then digging back with the same side defender. So that'll be really interesting from from a coach's X's and O perspective to see how UConn handles that tonight. Mark Wise of ESPN. Mark, while we're on the Purdue side of things, a win tonight for head coach Matt Painter. What would that do for his career? Well, I would like to think, um, you know, I I just wish we would quit putting this crown on people just because you won an NCAA tournament, and yet it is a very close, uh, it's a very um, um, hard-to-get-in fraternity to win six games in in three weeks. So, uh, yeah, he belongs in that category anyway. Uh, He's kind of a common sense um, um, leader of coaches right now. He serves on a lot of NCAA committees. He's he's about bettering the game. Um, So in a lot of ways, um, I think he's already a great coach. I'm curious why his name's not popping up. Uh, for some of these coaching jobs that we're seeing coming around because I don't know how you can do better than Matt Painter. We'll get to the shock value of the coaching carousel involving John Calipari coming up in a moment. Actually, I guess we could almost get there right now because UConn going for back-to-back titles. And, look, Hurley at UConn is an incredible coach, obviously. There are rumors about Kentucky and Hurley. and Kentucky may be throwing the bag at him. I wonder if that's any distraction for him and his team coming into tonight's game? You know, I, I think it's so sudden. Probably not. Maybe if this happened a week ago, it might be. And, and I get the immediacy uh, of the Hurley hire. I think he's a great fit at UConn. I think he's a great fit in the Big East. I, I don't – yes, can the guy Can the guy coach? Can, can, but coaching at Kentucky is a completely different animal, as you know. Coaching uh, uh, football at Ohio State or at Notre Dame is a completely different animal in terms of all the things you have to deal with and handle. Here's what I know. Here's what I think. And I've already said this about the ED. He's got to win his matchup. Purdue's got to limit their turnovers tonight. Not turn the ball over like they did against NC State. I think they had 16 in the game. 16 tonight, the game won't be close. And then can you con? Because of the way they're going to guard Edie, if they're, if they're going to bring help, can they still guard the arc? Because Purdue being the best three-point shooting team in the country, I don't think they're due for one of those 12, 13, 14 mate games. If they do that, they'll be right there at the end. You know, you think about those movies where you have the one guy on the one side and the one guy on the other, and there's a battle, and they're getting rid of all right. the rift raft, and then they ultimately meet in the middle – that feels like what tonight is, right? UConn got rid <laughs> yeah. of their rift raft. <laughs> Purdue got rid of their rift raft. And now the culmination in the middle. Who's more prepared for tonight's game if it's close late in the second half? Well, you know, um, Purdue has certainly played the out of comp from day one. Uh, they, they, they've played everybody. Um, I, I, UConn has just simply thrashed everybody. Um, it, I think that would be a hard thing to kind of measure. Uh, I do know this. I know 
you know, I, I look at a guy like Caravan for UConn who always seems to make the most important threes at the most important time. When they get on a run, he's usually somewhere involved. And the way Jones has played for Purdue, uh, especially knocking down some threes where he hasn't shot the, the three ball, he's one of the few guys that you can kind of get off of on the, on the arc. But he made big shot after big shot the other day. So if you're looking for a couple of X-Factor guys, I, I think that's – two of them right there, but my gosh, I mean, the Yukon, the, the, the Newton Castleton Spencer, Spencer is just a, he's, he's just a tough minded guy. And on the other side, you've got lawyer and Jones and Gillis. I mean, th- this is a fabulous matchup. Mark, we'll get a prediction in one moment before we get there. Let's talk about John Calipari and the absolute to me, like I said, shock value. I mean, I'm, I'm on social media last night and I say, what? Calipari, to where? To Arkansas. I mean, you cover college basketball and the SEC as close as anybody I know. Did you see something like this coming? No. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have been shocked if Cal had gone to USC. I mean, doesn't that seem like a better fit for his personality? Um, I will tell you this. Uh, you know I'm a native Kentuckian, and there are two things about Cal that – I think we'll have lasting impression on all Kentuckians. One is he wrapped his arms around uh, being the Kentucky head coach and, and the Commonwealth as a whole in terms of his uh, fundraising and his reaching out and his from Pikeville to Paducah to Covington to almost the, the Kentucky border with Tennessee. I mean, he, he went all over the state and, I think you have to do that. As the Kentucky head coach, you have to make the rounds from the Commonwealth all the way from the tip of Missouri to the uh, corner of West Virginia. The other thing is, and yes, he got all kinds of talent, but he, he also had all kinds of prima donnas. And, and his lasting impression for me, if he does indeed take this and move on, how hard he gets his teams to play. I mean, he, he, he make, there is no, if you see a Kentucky practice, it is a John Calipari practice and he's not afraid to call out players regardless of their ego. And, and you and I have both seen plenty of players who don't always play hard, who have the most talent that wouldn't float for him. And so, you know, that, that's something that I, I've always admired about. Final moments with Mark Wise of ESPN. I mean, that's a home run hire for Arkansas, right, Mark, if it happens? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think there will be some people um, questioning the last four or five years, but my goodness, how about the first nine years he was at Kentucky? And really, the thing that changed, in my view, is the pandemic. Uh, They were not the same. They they weren't. They had a really good team that year. I think they would have made a run the tournament. The following year was the year they had the losing record. And then truthfully, they kind of hit and missed on some transfers. Remember, they took uh, Grady, the shooter from Davidson, that didn't really pan out. Frederick from Iowa was never healthy. He never panned out. Antonio Reeves was great. So um, in this day and age of the transfer portal, the way that Cal wrapped his arms finally around the analytics of the game and let this team shoot a boatload of threes now it helps when you've got better shooters but i think he will go to arkansas with a fresh mindset this could be i think hacker a win-win for both programs before we get a prediction on tonight's game mark final john calipari question going back to kentucky now what do they do obviously (laughs) there's going to be no shortage of candidates right and yeah. You know, look, let's, let's bring it locally. I mean, let's just throw it out there. You know Billy Donovan very closely from your days covering him at Florida. I mean, that's a name. Hurley at UConn is a name. Yeah. Nate Oates at Alabama. I mean, the biggest of the big names are out there. What do you think Kentucky's going to do here? Uh, you know, I don't have any idea. I, I highly doubt Billy Donovan goes back to college. Uh, everybody wants to talk about Nate Oates and the buyout at Kentucky basketball. If enough people want to get involved, that will not be a problem, I don't think. Uh, Hurley, I think, will be a tough move from UConn. I think he's kind of entrenched there. Um, and then you've got the, you know, the, the Scott Drews of the world, the Mark Popes of the world to have a little Kentucky tie in that 
pick. So I don't know what direction they're going. Um, usually when you make these kind of hires, you want something a little bit different. So I think they'll look for somebody that's still going to put guys in the pros. So you're going to have, and it's a different, it's a level playing field now in terms of NIL. And let's stop calling it NIL. We're paying players. So um, it's a level playing field in terms of, of raising the money to get the players that you need. And then who's able to, to turn those guys into pros like uh, Cal has done, but in a more modern era of college basketball. I, I think that's – so, I, you know, I, I got to believe that Nate Oates is high on the list. I got to believe Scott Drew's high on the list. We'll see where they go. One of the more interesting names I've heard, and again, it's so fresh, Brad Stevens, who yeah. obviously was at Butler forever, went to the Celtics. He's now in the front office with Boston. Again, I have no idea if he would be interested in coming back to coach uh, in yeah. the college game, but boy, if you are, I mean, Kentucky's one of the jobs, right? That Brad Stevens might consider. I just don't see it. I don't see once you're at the NBA level, you you no longer have to deal with boosters. You no longer have to get out on the recruiting trail. So you take away those two things. I think this is my own personal opinion. I just think that eliminates Brad Stevens. I think that eliminates Billy Dodd. Mark Wise of ESPN. All right, Mark, they're tipping things off in a matter of moments out in Glendale, Arizona. I'm going to let you get to it to watch the game. Before that, let's get a prediction out of you. UConn and Purdue, who's cutting the nets down tonight and winning the national championship? Well, I've said all along, I I like, you know, I like uh, eight to one shots. I like 10 to one shots. I like the, I don't like to bet on the, the chalk, but I just don't see it any other way. I think UConn wins. I think they cut down the nets. I think they are the back-to-back champions for the first time since Florida. And uh, if it's going to be close, uh, again, I I think Edie's going to get his, but Purdue's going to have to make some threes. They're going to have to make, let's say, at least nine if they want to be the hangaround team at the end. Mark Wise of ESPN going with UConn. Mark, you've been with us all month long, brother. I can't thank you enough. We appreciate it. We'll let you go get a little rest now, get ready for the game. <laughs> but we will be dialing your phone very soon as it will be NBA draft time before you know it. Thank you as always, my friend. All right, thanks. Enjoy the game. The Florida Gators are on 1010XL. The rivalry returns to the Diamond. Florida, Florida State Baseball. Tomorrow night at 6 on 1010 AM. The 2024 draft is almost here. The Jaguars are now on the clock. Join us at Everbank Stadium Thursday, April 25th for the official Do Draft Party presented by Donovan Air Electric and Plumbing. Be there as the Jaguars make the 17th overall pick and don't miss the unveiling of the official 30th season logo that you voted on. We're getting the party started at 7 p.m. Tickets are free, so register today at jaguars.com slash draft party. We can't wait to see you there. The Jacksonville Jaguars select... Men, suffering from ED or PE, you'll see instant results on your first visit at Prime Men's Medical Center. For a limited time, your initial consultation and first treatment are totally free. You'll even get a gift that enhances performance in the bedroom. Call 904-664-8217. Bet, bet, bet on the ball game. Get your money down. Money lines, totals, and parlays. We're cashing tickets all around. It's baseball betting season, and VEASAN's MLB betting guide is a home run for bettors. Download your free special edition of the guide, featuring a betting preview of the Atlanta Braves and Tampa Bay Rays at 1010XL.com. That's 1010XL.com. Hi, this is Dave Barker. Multi-unit hair grafting is now available at IHRS and can give you three times more hair in one procedure over a traditional hair transplant. Multi-unit hair grafting gave me more hair in one procedure and within my budget. You can grow your hair back with this exclusive new procedure. Call for a free evaluation. Call IHRS, 904-777-IHRS, 777-IHRS, 777-4477. Atlantic Beach, live and local on 1010XL, 92.5 FM. After a storm passes, the assessment of the aftermath begins. Sometimes damage to the roof is obvious, like leaks or missing shingles, broken or damaged gutters, or tree debris. 
but storm damage is not always as clearly present. Universal Roofing Contracting is here to help and will come assess your roof for any hidden damage. Call Universal Roof to schedule your free roof inspection at 855-ROOF-HELP or visit universalroof.com. License number CCC057165, CBC1258484. If you are having problems related to selling your home, here's your solution. You just have not discovered chadandsandy.com. That's Chad A N D Sandy.com. Listen, maybe the problem is you need more space for your office or growing family, or perhaps you're worried about settling for less money with a low ball instant offer. We've got one guarantee here that always rings true. Chad and Sandy guarantee your home sold at an agreed upon price and deadline, or they will buy it. It's as simple as that. So you need to call 904-414-6200 or go to chadandsandy.com like Jonathan and Mount Pleasant did. The only thing standing between me and my dream of traveling in my RV was the sale of my Mount Pleasant home. I heard Chad and Sandy on the radio and called crazy results. In just three days, I received multiple offers for full asking price. So you don't have the problems you think you do. You have solutions and promises with Chad and Sandy. Go to chadandsandy.com or call 904 414 6200 at chatandsandy.com. Mia here, and let me tell you about one of our area's best resorts, the Sawgrass Marriott Golf Resort and Spa. The Sawgrass Marriott is not only a great destination for a vacation, but it is also a great destination for dining on the Florida's first coast. 1912 Ocean Bar and Rooftop is now open on Ponte Vedra Boulevard, featuring Ponte Vedra's only oceanfront rooftop bar and lounge. Serving finely crafted cocktails and delectable eats, it's open daily from 4 to 10 with complimentary valet parking. Cross, I'm thinking about changing my name. Again? You're already the media mogul, the straw that stirs the drink, the Duke of Pablo Bay. Now what? Refer to me as Dreamfinders Danny Hicken. What in the blazes? Is this a cash grab? No, it's just that I believe so much in Dreamfinders Homes. 20 locations in Northeast Florida, official home builder of Jags and Gators, Great opportunity for first-time homeowners. All right. DreamFinders Danny it is. Did I mention the lowest interest rates you can find? Visit DreamFindersHomes.com. Now let DreamFinders Danny celebrate through the majesty of song. DreamFinders. Oh, bro. I believe they will build your stop. home just right. Tacos and sports go hand in hand, literally. You can watch sports with a taco in each hand or with a taco in one hand and a surfboard in the other. Don here from Taco Lou. I love sports, and since you're listening to this station, you love sports as well. If you love sports and tacos, then Taco Lou is calling your name. We always have the game on here, so you can call in a to-go order to watch at home, or let us cater your next watch party. Catering for the holidays, no problem. Taco Lou and Jack's Beach. Cheers to tacos, sports, holidays with the family, and tequila. David here with Royal Pest Services. Man, don't let your yard be torn up by that heavy aeration machine this spring. Visit RoyalPestServices.com to learn more about our granular aeration. Broadcast throughout the tree and shrubs to break up that compacted soil. Visit RoyalPestServices.com. ET here, and it's time for the Taste of Golf at TPC Sawgrass, April 24th. Join me for fine cuisine from chefs from the top golf clubs in our area, craft cocktails, games, and unique auction items. This is one of the most charitable events in our area. Come network with a sophisticated audience who is passionate about golf and its value, all while impacting the youth in our community. All proceeds benefit First Team North Florida. For tickets, go to tasteofgolf.com. Come on, somebody. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. This is Hacker After Dark on 1010XL. And they are underway for the national championship. Mark the time, 9.22 Eastern Standard Time. The ball is finally tipped off. Boy, what on earth is that all about? I understand the game's out in Phoenix, but a little love for some people here on the East Coast. This game will be lucky to get over by 11.30 or 11.45. Nevertheless, UConn an early 3-2 to two lead on Purdue. Um, check that. Purdue now up 4-3 as they're going back and forth in the first 90 seconds of play. But uh, there you go. Last college basketball game until November. They'll decide a national champion tonight. We'll hear um, a little one shining moment as well. I know that it that's every year and, you know, it, it's, it is what it is, but I still love it. I think that's one of the great moments in sports is the one shining moment video song to culminate the end of the NCAA tournament. You know, it was interesting today as we shift gears back to the National Football League. By the way, Emory Hunt, 
the founder of Football Game Plan. He's got the Football Game Plan draft guide. I think it's one of the best draft guides out there. You also see him on CBS Sports HQ. He is coming up in just about 10 minutes here on Hacker After Dark. Next Monday, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, next Monday, April the 15th, the Jacksonville Jaguars come back to work. Yeah, the off-season conditioning program begins a week from today, if you can believe that. And in fact, every team with a first-year head coach is already back at their off-season workouts. Four teams reported last week. Four more teams reported today. The teams that are already back in, the L.A. Chargers and head coach Jim Harbaugh, the New England Patriots with Gerard Mayo, they reported today for their off-season workout. Patriots are having to figure out pretty quick what they're going to do at quarterback. They hold the number three pick in the draft. Are they going to take Drake May? Are they going to take Jaden Daniels? Are they going to trade out? I would imagine they're go quarterback, but we'll find out in 17 days. By the way, the Chargers have all sorts of problems. Jim Harbaugh is a great coach, and I have no doubt that he could do well in time there in L.A., but when you lose Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Gerald Everett, I mean, good grief. What are realistic expectations for the Chargers coming into this year having to replace all that talent? The Tennessee Titans reported for voluntary workouts today. That means our old friend Calvin Ridley was probably in the building in Nashville today as the Brian Callahan era of Tennessee Titan football begins. Give the Titans credit in one aspect. They had a ton of money to spend in free agency, and they spent it. Whether it was running back Tony Pollard from Dallas, Calvin Ridley from Jacksonville, trading for Legereus Sneed from Kansas City, signing Lloyd Cushenberry, the center from Denver, bringing in Kenneth Murray, the linebacker from the Chargers. I mean, the Titans did a good job. That was a bad roster that they've made a decent roster in one off season, much like the Jaguars did two years ago in free agency. And we'll see what all of that means. But the Titans reported for work today. Other teams that are in, the Falcons were in last week. Carolina reported today. Bryce Young entering year number two of his NFL career. Obviously, last year left a lot to be desired. The Seattle Seahawks also reported today as life after Pete Carroll begins. Of course, Mike McDonald, formerly of the Baltimore Ravens, as their defensive coordinator, takes over in Seattle for Pete Carroll now, who is no longer with the Seahawks, at least as a head coach. So, eight of the 32 have reported for off-season workouts. The other 24 will report next Monday, which includes the Jacksonville Jaguars. And a lot of newness, man. When they cleaned out those lockers on January 8th, think about the guys that were in that locker room. You think about Darius Williams and Rayshon Jenkins and Foley Fadakasi, Brandon McManus, Calvin Ridley, on down the line, Caleb on chase on. All of those guys are gone. Every one of them's gone. And now the new guys that will come in, Mitch Morse, Gabe Davis, Eric Armstead, Devin Duvernay, Darnell Savage, Ronald Darby, Joey Sly, Travis Gibson, Mac Jones. The Jaguars, if they weren't the most active, they were one of the most active teams in the NFL this offseason, bringing in a ton of guys, having to replace a ton of guys. Look, if you were mad that they sat on their hands and did nothing last offseason, you can't be mad this time around because they brought in a lot of different players to try to change the outlook of a team that ended on a five out of six losing streak and became only the sixth team this century to start a year eight and three and miss the postseason. So the Jaguars are in next Monday. We'll continue the conversation about the Jaguars and the draft, which is two weeks from Thursday night. Emory Hunt, the founder and owner of Football Game Plan, one of the best draft guides out there. You also see him on CBS Sports HQ. Let's talk Jacksonville. Let's talk free agent moves, but more so, what do those free agent moves mean when it comes to the draft? Is wide receiver the biggest need? Is corner the biggest need? 
I'm going to ask him, what if Jared Verse is there at 17? Let's dive into the Jags and their draft outlook, and let's do it next. Emory Hunt, the owner of Football Game Plan, he's on deck. On a Monday night in Jacksonville, Florida, you got it right here, Hacker After Dark on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. Let's now welcome Jaguars legend and inaugural pride of the Jaguars inductee, Tony Baselli. 1010XL. Attention all business owners. The raining season is coming and it's important to ensure that your property storm drains are free from debris and functioning properly. That's where Duck Duck Rooter comes in. Our powerful VacCon truck can effectively clean out your storm drains and prevent costly damage to your property from flooding. Don't let clogged storm drains ruin your business and reputation. Call Duck Duck Rooter today to schedule a cleaning before the rains hit. 904-862-6769 or online at duckduckrooter.com. Here's your 1010XL community calendar of local events and nonprofit groups helping people here at home. If you'd like to learn more about the Police Athletic League's Julian Jackson Amateur Boxing Tournament Saturday, April 13th, go to jackspalsports.org. If you'd like to play in the Northeast Florida Cornhole Tournament at Wingate Park, May 18th, register at Tsunami10U at mail.com. It benefits Tsunami Fast Pitch Softball. The Tom Coughlin J Fund helps families battling childhood cancer, and there are ways you can help. Go to tcjfund.org. City Rescue Mission provides life-changing support for the homeless. Find ways to get involved at crmjets.org. If your home is missing a little love, the Jacksonville Humane Society has over 100 pets of all ages and breeds looking for a loving home. Find yours at jackshumane.org. You can find out how to share your community event at 1010XL.com. I'm here with Danny Van Sickle, director of the Electrical Training Alliance. Danny, tell me about your program. Hey, Rick. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Our students start out making over $40,000 a year and right now graduate making over $90,000 a year, including benefits. There is no tuition or no student debt. You just have to apply and get accepted. Did you say no tuition and no student debt? You heard that right, Rick. Once you're accepted to the program, your only cost are the books and the course fees. About $800 a year. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How can I learn more? Just go to ETAJAX.org and you can apply there. Apply by May 23rd. With Spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot, you can get up to $2,300 off select kitchen packages from top brands like GE Profile. That means you can save on a new GE Profile smart quad door refrigerator that's full of convenient features like a dual dispense auto fill pitcher and an ice dispenser with up to 12 and a half pounds capacity. Bring convenience to your kitchen with smart, innovative appliances from GE Profile. Right now, save up to $2,300 on select kitchen packages with Spring Black Friday savings at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Spend lunchtime with the ladies. A meal and sparkling conversation. Helmets and heels. Mia O'Brien, Lauren Brooks, and Taylor Dahl. Just stop. Behave, okay? Switched on by First Coast Lighting and Fans on 1010XL. Dave Binion here with my son Ammon, who is the air duct cleaning manager at Zero Res. So Ammon, you may notice a little rattle in my voice and some puffiness in my eyes. That's because allergy season is coming on. Can Zero Res help? Yes, your health has a lot to do with the air you breathe. A clean and healthy home begins with clean air. At Zero Res, we can help clean the air in your home by cleaning your air ducts, cleaning the coils in your HVAC units, and fogging the system with a powerful antimicrobial that helps kill and control the growth of microorganisms in your air. We also have options for maintaining your clean air with our excellent inline air purifier and UV lights that will help keep your system clean and healthy. At Zero Res, we are more than just air duct cleaners. We're a clean air specialist. Have Zero Res air Air duct specialists out, and right now we'll give you $50 off your air duct cleaning, and while we're at it, we'll give you $50 off your dryer vent cleaning. Zero res. Spelled forward or backwards, it's, it's the, the right, right way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C. Zero res. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. 
you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All-Pro Roofing phone line. Back here on 1010XL and 92.5 FM in the city of Jacksonville. We are glad you are with us. We are now well inside of three weeks away from the NFL draft up in Detroit. Of course, the Jaguars hold the 17th pick in round number one. The Jaguars are one of the more active teams in NFL free agency. What will that mean when it comes to the draft now in less than three weeks? With that, Emory Hunt is one of our favorites to talk draft with. He is the owner of Football Game Plan. You can also see him on CBS Sports HQ. And Emory's always kind enough to give us some time here on 1010XL. Emory, how you doing? I'm doing fine, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, Emory, we always thank you uh, this time of year. We know how busy you are. All right, we're going to talk a lot of draft with you, certainly. But you and I haven't spoken since the offseason began. Uh, Jacksonville and the AFC South, quite frankly, two of the most active uh, teams and divisions going when it comes to free agency. Just a quick thought, Emory, on the Jaguars first. Uh, what did you make? Arrivals, departures? What did you make of their offseason so far? I think they've done a solid job defensively, man. I uh, did Eric Armstead. I uh, like Darnell Savage. I'm still a big fan of him. And obviously, Ronald Darby gives them some veteran presence as well on the corner. So I think defensively, they've done a really good job. Now, on the offensive side of the ball, Obviously, bringing in Gabe Davis gives them a, a dependable, you know, option at receiver. Duvernay is someone that can help them out immediately in the return game. Um, and so, for me, improving special teams, improving defense, I thought that was big moves right now for Jacksonville. Eric Armstead, in, in particular, what could he do for guys like Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker? Definitely free up some opportunities for them in one-on-one -on -one situations because – he is so long and athletic, and he still plays with that great length and athleticism to where he's going to command some double teams, and if they don't double him, he's very good in terms of getting pressure on his own. So it, it just bolsters the defensive line. It makes them hell to defend up front, and now you start to develop that rotation. You got guys like you know Abdullah coming into his second season. Lacey I was a big fan of. Actually, was my number one five technique last year, and Roy Robertson-Harris. So there's a lot of uh, – action up front a lot of things to like about what they've done they also bring in Travis Gibson um, as well so I like what they've done and adding an Eric Armstead continues to help bolster the rotation it helps accentuate those guys that are able to get after the quarterback a little bit better Emory Hunt is the owner of Football Game Plan. The draft guide for Football Game Plan is out. We will tell you all about that in just a moment. Quickly, you mentioned Travis Gibson. That's a guy we haven't talked a lot about. He's one of those under-the-radar guys. Ten sacks in Chicago in 21 and 22 combined. Was in Tennessee last year. Didn't do very much. Injuries were a big part of that. Could that be a sleeper that we're not really paying attention to and maybe we should here in Jacksonville? Yeah, especially when you're thinking about him in the in the scope of being a situational pass rusher, because that's what it's all about. You know, you're not asking him to be a starter. You're asking him to essentially be a hired gun, and that's what you want. Guys that can continue to stay fresh throughout the game, that can consistently bring that pressure. So there's some depth there as well, some young guys I want to see step up, because I'm a big fan of Deshaun Dixon, DJ Coleman I was a big fan of out of Missouri. So it's going to be fascinating to watch the rotation and the – the training camp battles with those guys vying for those opportunities because they have capable talent on the roster that can get pressure. The Luke Fortner experiment, at least for the time being, Emory appears to be over as the Jaguars brought in Mitch Morse. What could Morse and the re-signing of Ezra Cleveland do for the interior of that Jaguar line? Well, Morse gives you that veteran presence, and Cleveland brings that continuity, and we know continuity is king along the offensive line. If you can get guys that have played together to stay together, 
it helps both of the offensive front because that's the biggest thing. You could assemble so much talent across the board, but if there's no continuity, there's no communication, and then subsequently there's no consistency. So I like that they were able to bring him back in the fold, and it's just going to help both of that offensive fives. You know, Emory, I'm curious. Locally, we seem to like the Gabe Davis signing here. It has, like, Christian Kirk vibes to me of two years ago. Locally, we like it. Nationally, it's getting panned a little bit. Now, Christian Kirk no longer gets panned because when he's healthy, he has proven to be a very good wide receiver for the Jaguars. But I'm curious, your standpoint, a guy that covers the league on a national basis, why maybe outside of Jacksonville the Gabe Davis signing is not as liked as maybe it is here in Duval County? Because they're making him the scapegoat for Josh Allen's ineffectiveness in the postseason. And and that's basically what it is. We've seen this with – it's funny because if you look out west with the Chargers, it's funny how Austin Eckler is now not a good running back because they say – you know, the tweet that came out that said, hey, what if, you know, uh, Justin Herbert had a run game? Like, damn. So, just, uh, so Austin Eckler is not a good back anymore? And – you know, they'll say Justin Herbert never had weapons, as if Mike Williams went healthy, as if Keenan Allen went healthy, as if he didn't have Hunter Henry, as if they didn't draft a receiver in the first round. So you see that with Josh Allen. They're blaming Gabe Davis when really Gabe Davis is a very good receiver. So I think you're going to get that type of Gabe Davis, you know, effect, um, the good Gabe Davis out there on the field. Because, again, he wants to prove everyone that, hey, I can play. I'm not a bum. I'm actually a really good receiver, and I just feel like nationally, uh, for certain quarterbacks, they make excuses for, uh, you know, they'll, they'll scapegoat other players on the roster as opposed to just saying, hey, man, maybe the quarterback is, is not playing his best right now. They'll point the finger at every other person on that roster. You see it out here in New York with the Giants as opposed to pointing the finger at the main person, and that's usually the quarterback. Emery, final thought on free agency before we get to the draft. You mentioned Darnell Savage earlier. Doug Peterson made some news a couple of weeks ago. We thought Savage was going to be the Rayshon Jenkins replacement at safety. Come to find out, it looks like he's going to be more of a nickel guy. So now you have Ronald Darby, Darnell Savage, Tyson Campbell, and Antonio Johnson, the second-year player out of Texas A&M. Looks like he is going to be the Rayshon Jenkins replacement at safety. What do you make of the Jags' overhaul there in the defensive backfield? They're good. I mean, listen, and you can also add in Amani Aruarie as well. I thought he played some solid ball with the Giants and, you know, the Lions, you know, a sub guy. So, Savage, I always viewed him as a combo safety. So, that's someone that can play down in the nickel, that can cover as a corner, that can also drop back deep, that can also play on the hash. So, you're adding versatile talent on the back end. And we know this is a matchup league, and it's a game day matchup league. So, you know, one day, one game he may be a nickel. The next game he may be a strong safety. The next game he may be a corner. So it all depends on the matchup, And but that's what you want to get. You want to get guys that can do multiple things. Have the Jaguars done enough, Emory, in your opinion, at corner and at safety, and particularly at corner, I guess, because that was the thought going into pick 17 prior to free agency. Darius Williams out. The Jaguars need a corner. Everybody talks about Quinion Mitchell, one of the two Alabama guys. But then they go get Ronald Darby. They go get Darnell Savage. They bring in these guys. Is corner still the top pressing need for the Jaguars, in your opinion? It can be. Uh, you know, you, now you put yourself in a situation where you're at the best player available type of scenario where, you know, we're going to see a run on quarterbacks early. You may see a run on receiver or tackle early, and all of that pushes talent down where Jacksonville could be sitting there with a prime spot uh, where you might still have an elite corner on the board and you don't want to pass on an elite corner. So why not? You know, and that also helps out. Um, you, you could bring along a guy slowly where you don't have to throw him out there early because you've signed those veterans that you mentioned. But if you draft an elite player and you'll let him compete, if he's not ready to go day one, you don't have to worry about, you know, Ronald Darby out there or, you know, someone else. But if he's ready to go, then it just helps your room out because you have the ability to put the rookie out there and then fall back on veteran depth. So it, it doesn't hurt to really still think in terms of elite cornerback prospect could definitely be in play for Jacksonville. Emory Hunt, the owner of Football Game Plan. Emory, I tell you this every year, your draft guide is nuts. All the information you have, I believe it's the largest draft guide every year. I mean, pages and pages of information, and we'll get to that in a moment. Tell the good folks here in Jacksonville where they can get their hands on the football game plan draft guide. If Quinion Mitchell is gone, let's say Arnold from Alabama is gone, that's at least the projection right now. 
every other corner is there. Is there somebody worth taking at 17? And if so, who would that guy be? There's so many players worth taking at 17. That it'd be silly to name a bunch of them, right? So it really all depends on who's still there. Um, you may still get the Alabama kids there. You know, McKinstry and, and uh, Terion Arnold, those are excellent options. You may find that you you get a Jarvis Brownlee out of Louisville. Big fan of what he brings to the table. He's an excellent cover corner as well. So there's a ton of players that can help the Jaguars at pick 17, which is why it is so important for them to really not dismiss the that corners off the table because this is a very good class of corners in my opinion. Let's go to wide receiver. Calvin Ridley out, Gabe Davis in. The way it stands right now, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, and Zay Jones are the top three wide receivers. Wide receiver is also a name that you see linked to the Jaguars, particularly a guy like Brian Thomas out of LSU, A.D. Mitchell out of Texas. Your thoughts on the wideout position when it comes to Jacksonville at 17? Well, I wouldn't discount Parker Washington as well, too. I'm a big fan of his game, too. So, you know, th- there's some talent there. Um, at receiver, you, you kind of say, okay, what can we use? Do we want the deep guy, the guy that wins with his routes deeper down the field to help out the deep passing game? Do we want more catch and run guys? Because I feel like this draft is littered with catch and run guys. Both Brian Thomas and A.D. Mitchell, low key, are catch and run guys. Fol- folks look at the size and think, oh, these are vertical stri- uh, stretch players. Sure. That, that's part of their game, too. But these guys can take a short pass and go a long way. They navigate the, a broken field rather well. So those can help out uh, Jacksonville. You also bring up a guy in Lab McConkie, you know, who could play inside or outside and can get vertical down the field and is a catch-and-run guy. So there's a ton of talent, man. Like, this is why people talk about this class as an elite group. You want a Christian Kirk kind of type? Well, Malachi Corley of Western Kentucky is another one. He's a physical guy, 5'10" and about 215, so he's he's another one. Co- Keon Coleman, uh, listen, Jacksonville is sitting in a great spot to grab an elite receiver and or an elite corner if they so choose so. If it comes down to Thomas or Mitchell at 17, uh, who do you have higher on your on your board? Well, I'll grade players differently. Um, so I have A.D. Mitchell as, you know, a, a Z receiver, which is kind of like a guy that plays a little bit off the line of scrimmage. Um, and I have a Thomas as an X, you know, so which is kind of like, you you know, he's good versus press. And so for me, they're, they're right there. And so both guys, I do have A.D. Mitchell ahead of Brian Thomas by a point in my draft grade. And I do have them both as split ends. I've misspoke, but I do have A.D. Mitchell a little bit higher. I feel like he's a little bit more underrated because of the quarterback play at Texas. And that's why he didn't have the gaudy numbers that we saw from a Brian Thomas. Uh, based off who he had him throwing the football. Uh, So, you know, both guys are excellent. I have both guys with an 80 grade above. So that's like really good first round talent. So you really can't go wrong. Final moments, Emory Hunt, football game plan. He is the owner. You also see him at CBS Sports HQ. Emory, what I've been told by a lot of guys in your line of work, and I'm curious you because you're one of the guys to go to, uh, if you need corner and wide receiver, you're better off taking a corner in round one because wide receiver may be deeper, and at 48, you can still get a very good player in round two. Do you agree with that assessment? I say take the best player you have your chance to take and don't try to game the draft. If you think this corner can help you out right now and is elite, take him. Because if you try to play the draft and kind of like scale back, okay, I'm going to make sure – I dip back, and then, you know, I can kind of get this guy. No, you never know how the draft is going to play out. Take the guy that you like, that you have a high grade on, when you have the chance to take him. Final question, because I want to get to your football draft guide, your football game plan draft guide after this. I'm a Jared Verse guy. I understand that might not be the biggest need for the Jaguars, but the thought of Eric Armstead, Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, and Jared Verse uh, should have Jaguar fans salivating, in my opinion. And quite frankly, Emory, I'm shocked because a lot of mock drafts that you see, some have Jared Verse available at 17. I didn't think that would be a possibility a month or two ago. Will he be there? I, I, I tend to doubt it personally. But if he is, Emory, is that something the Jaguars should at least think about? Oh, absolutely. Because here's the thing. He may be there because let's say this, and we know how the draft tends to go. You may have a situation where the run on – uh, we know the run on quarterback is probably going to go one, two, three, but the run on receivers or tackles could also push guys down because 
who is going to start the run. Whether it's some whoever takes the first receiver, expect five receivers to go next. Whoever takes the first tackle, expect five tackles to go next. And it all pushes elite talent down to Jacksonville. So you may get a situation where you may have your pick and choose chooses of lot two or verse. You know, and so you may be able to say, hey, we got a chance to take an elite pass rusher, receiver, or cornerback. And that really makes things tough for Jacksonville, but it's a great problem to have. It would be a great problem to have. Memory serves. I think Jacksonville with Anton Harrison kind of started that run a little bit towards the end of round one last year at offensive tackle. All right, Emory, football game plan. You are the owner. You have the football game plan draft guide. It is awesome every single year. Tell the good folks here in Jacksonville about it and, more importantly, where they can find it. Listen, this year we have over 900 individual scouting reports. A lot of guys went back to school because usually it's over 1,000, but it's still the largest draft guide out there, full-color PDF. You can find it at footballgameplan.com slash 2024 draft guide. So it's great for the draft and through the draft and through the regular season because we know the practice squad gets filled up. We know guys hop on and off the roster, and we were pretty sure that we will have a, a scouting report on whoever is getting drafted or whoever the Jaguar signed and throws on a roster. And it's a great way to help scout the opponents in the AFC South as well, knowing who was on the roster, what my thoughts were on them. And if you are able, if you're a loyal subscriber of the draft guide, and I put these out digitally since 2020, if you purchase one every year since 2020, you will right now be sitting on over 4,300 individual scouting reports. So you would have a depth of knowledge on Players that are in the NFL, UFL, CFL, European League of Football, we would have you covered. That's why this is so valuable, not only for this draft, but for years to come. It is crazy the amount of information that's in this draft guide from Emory Hunt at Football Game Plan. Trust me on that. Emory, leave us with this. Free agency was wild in the AFC South. Now that all the dust has settled prior to the draft, how do you assess the division as we enter the month of April? If, well, if you remember last year, I, I picked the Colts to win the division, That's right? That's right, and, you did. You you were a big popular guy on the show when you uh, when you did that <laughs> last year, and you almost nailed it, too. Almost nailed it. So this year, I will say this, man. Houston got better. Indy got better. Jacksonville got better. Tennessee got better on defense. I, I can't even make a prediction right now because I feel the chalk would, would say Houston. But, man, this is, good. Th- this is why the draft is important because that could be the separator from – who is going to win this division? And if we're being completely honest, we may see two teams out the South get out, get into the playoffs this year. So I can't make a prediction right now, April 8th, but my goodness, this is going to be a very tough division um, going down the, going down the stretch. Yeah, we'll get predictions from Emory Hunt in a couple of months when training camp approaches. All right, Emory, one more time. Tell us the website. Where can people get their hands on the draft guide? footballgameplan.com slash 2024 draft guide it's the best value for your buck because it gives you all the information that you need the most detailed and largest draft guide in existence emory you're the man i know you're busy thank you for taking time out for us here in jacksonville we'll do it again in a couple of months my friend looking forward to it man always a pleasure pleasure uh bringing me on the show and thank you to Emory Hunt of Football Game Plan. He is the owner of Football Game Plan. You can also see him over there at CBS Sports HQ. I'm serious, man. That draft guide he puts out there with Football Game Plan, it's the biggest one of its kind. There is a ton of information on that thing. If you're a draft guy like I am, you will really enjoy that Football Game Plan draft guide. And I remember when Emory was on with us last year, And look, he ruffled some feathers here in Jacksonville when he said the Colts were going to win the division, and he darn near nailed that up until the final week of the year, and he stuck with that even after Anthony Richardson got hurt. He made that prediction when he thought Anthony Richardson was going to be healthy, and yet Indy still went on to win nine games despite having an injured Anthony Richardson. So, Emory knows a thing or two about what he's talking about. We're always happy to have him on here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. And look, wide receiver, defensive back, that seems to be all the talk, right? Except, and you know my caveat, I'm a Jared Verse guy. In fact, I did my very unscientific Monday mock earlier today that I posted on social media, and Jared Verse was there at number 17, and I grabbed him instantly. So I would have no trepidation if the Jaguars ended up with Jared Verse. But if Verse is gone 
then certainly at that point, best wide receiver or the best defensive back available. Well, that'll just about do it. It has been a very, very busy Monday night edition here of Hacker After Dark. We certainly appreciate you guys for hanging out with us here on 1010XL and on 92.5 FM. We have a ton of people to thank. Again, Emory Hunt of Football Game Plan. He's very busy this time of year with the NFL Draft just over two weeks away. So we appreciate Emory taking time out for us tonight. Thank you to Mark Wise of ESPN for previewing UConn and Purdue, the national championship game going on right now, and also to talk about the absolutely crazy coaching news in college basketball, John Calipari on his way to Arkansas. Boy, that came out of left field for a lot of people. Calipari out of Lexington, out at the University of Kentucky, on his way to Fayetteville to coach the Razorbacks. Great get for Arkansas, and now the big question is, what does that mean for the coaching opening at Kentucky? Jobs like Kentucky do not come open, but once every so often, and you would have to think the biggest names in college basketball might be throwing themselves at that job, so we'll certainly see. But a big seismic shift coaching-wise in college basketball in the Southeastern Conference earlier today. We will be back tomorrow night. On a Tuesday, again, new schedule, right? We're no longer 10 to midnight. We're 8 to 10 every night, Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, right here on Hacker After Dark. So we do hope that you join us then. Dylan Denmark was your producer tonight. Dylan, great job as always. I'm the Hacker Ryan Green. And again, Jacksonville, thank you for spending part of your Monday evening with us right here on Hacker After Dark, on 1010XL, and on 92.5 FM. Men. So-